Hello and welcome to Inside Modular, the podcast of commercial modular construction brought to you by the Modular Building Institute. Hello everyone, my name is John McMullen. I'm the marketing director here at MBI. Today, I'm happy to welcome Scott Bridger, co-founder of ProSet Modular and now co-founder of ModCribs. Scott's here today to talk about the development of ModCribs and what the product could mean for the industry. Scott, thanks for being here. Well, you're very welcome. Thanks for having me, John. I'm looking forward to the conversation. My pleasure, my pleasure. So let's dive right in. Uh, as one of the leaders of ProSet for a long time now, you've pretty much seen it all when it comes to modular building, modular setting. Uh, wh what's that process in a nutshell? Why is setting and, and on-site logistics so important to a modular project? Well, it, uh, kind of a big question, but but a really good one. Um, and I guess I should start by prefacing my answer um, to say that our company, uh, ProSet, uh, and now ModCribs, we're basically focused in the modular world and what we call uh, commercial modular, and even more specifically, um, multifamily, hospitality, assisted living, those type of projects. So uh, there's a there's kind of a big umbrella of commercial modular projects, as you well know. Uh, but that's that's really kind of the basis for what our uh, activity in the industry is and, and for kind of how I'll answer questions and talk about uh, the industry today. So it, it sort of in that framework of, of the kind of projects that we're that we're referring to and that we're working on. Um, essentially, the logistics are, are fairly complicated just simply by um, uh, by way of the, the, the scope and the size of a lot of these projects. So our average, uh, ProSet's average installation project is around 100 modular units, um, typically in one building, but could be over multiple buildings. Uh, and, and our projects could be anywhere from, you know, 20 or 30 modular units all the way up to, you know, four or 500 or more modular units. So there's a big range, but the point being, uh, these are fairly complex projects when it comes to planning those logistics as you described. So, um, you know, the logistics associated with this really and, and with, with process scope, it really is kind of what we think of from the moment a modular unit leaves the factory where it was produced until it's permanently affixed and secured to a foundation. So that's kind of the life cycle that where we live and where these log logistics kind of become critical and 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 we'll certainly get into how mod cribs plays a role in that uh, but really it's it's it, it kind of starts with the order that we're going to set a building in uh, because every modular unit has its specific space in the building they're not interchangeable so we create a set order based on on the crane logistics and the site conditions and all all, all kinds of conditions uh, some structural engineering details and so forth and that order that we're going to set the building informs a whole lot of the logistics of that process it's going to tell us what order we need to receive them from either for, from the factory or from a local staging yard, um, which is gonna inform the order that they need to be shipped by the trucking company, which is gonna be uh, typically is gonna inform the manufacturer in what order they actually build them. So that whole process is kind of what we consider the preset logistics. Can you take me through, and you mentioned some of these just now, uh, but can you take me through really all the physical elements uh, that are needed for a successful setting. Uh, I know there's a crane and there's lots of trucks, but besides that, what's what's really needed uh, to successfully put together a modular building? So I, I guess the way I would say might be the easiest uh, way to describe that is to take it in in sort of the journey of a modular unit, so to speak, from the manufacturing facility. Uh, but before I start there, I'm going to preface this by saying, most of these projects, as I've described, with uh, a fairly significant number of modular units, are going to need to have a storage yard that is either at the job site or near the job site. And that's an important uh, piece of this logistics um, sort of conversation because um, what a lot of folks that maybe haven't really um, really dug in deep to what that process looks like. That sometimes uh, is not an understood piece of the puzzle. So the reason that we need typically to have an on-site or, or a near the job site staging yard, it's actually for multiple reasons, but namely it's because most projects are going to be too far away from the manufacturing facility to just simply take the modular unit from the factory, put it on a trailer and, and have a truck deliver it straight to a crane and set on a on a foundation. Um, 
for a few reasons that rarely works. That's what's called just in time delivery. And, and that's something that we really discourage because it rarely is successful. The main reason for that is that if you can imagine how long it takes to deliver a modular unit from a factory to a, a job site or a storage yard near a job site, often that's going to be hundreds of, and hundreds of miles. And so that's going to take you know, a day or a few days for every truck delivery. So if you have 100 modular units being delivered from a factory to a staging yard that's hundreds of miles away, that's probably going to be you know, many weeks of delivery. There's kind of a slow trickle of modular units that get delivered to that storage yard. Well, when ProSet or, or a set company like ProSet starts installing uh, a building, um, those modular units are going to be installed at a much faster pace than that. Typically, they're going to be installed at at least 10, 10 or so a day and sometimes as many as 20 a day. That's just a lot faster than the trucking process happens. So that's the, that's why there's a need for a local, local storage yard. Okay, so now let's back up and let's go through this quickly from cradle to grave, so to speak, from delivery to foundation. So a modular unit is completed at a factory. Typically, the factory is going to have an exterior storage yard right there at their facility, and they're going to store some number of those modular units before they get shipped out to the job site. They're going to let the inventory of those units probably build up for a couple of reasons. Could be that the job site's not ready. Could be that uh, they want to have an efficient trucking program so that they're not uh, waiting for modular units to be completed before they ship another one. It's a, it's a more efficient way um, to let some of the units get finished. So you're going to start with some number of modular units being stored on cribs at a modular manufacturer's facility in the yard. Then they're going to get trucked from the yard to that local storage yard or potentially on site. On site is not common because most job sites don't have that kind of extra lay down. So it'd be usually a storage yard somewhere within hopefully a few miles of the job site. Now that now that the storage yard is full of all these modular units, that's when ProSet or another set company then sets up the crane at the job site. And then there's a process called the local shuttle. So now we have a trucking company that's picking up those modular units from the local storage yard and delivering them straight to the crane. And typically they will be craned right off of the truck, uh, off the trailer, um, onto the foundation structurally secured. And typically that's about the end of our scope. Uh, then we move on to the next job. So that's kind of the, the path, so to speak, of a modular unit. Gotcha. And you mentioned this uh, in your answer. So um, well, let's get right to it. Tell me about cribbing. I've been to some factories. I've seen different things used as cribbing, mostly wood, um, but a few other materials. Sure. And I think it really starts with kind of you know, to your question, what is cribbing and, and, and why is it needed and how is it used? And, and, and then we can get into the particulars of different types of cribbing. But um, cribbing is essentially temporary support stands for volumetric modular units. It's kind of the definition of cribbing in, in our world, at least. And so let's let's just go through that. So what is, let's start with the temporary part. Um, so as I described the journey of a modular unit from factory to foundation, it's got a couple stops along the way, right? So the first stop is probably storage at the manufacturer's yard. So it needs to be supported temporarily, whether that's for a day or a week or a month or however long that might be, it needs to be temporarily supported before it's transported to the storage yard. Once it gets to the storage yard, it needs to be temporarily supported again. So these modular units, more often than not, are not intended to sit directly on the ground. Um, and part of the reason for that is because there's an important component of the logistics and, and transportation of modular units, which is how they get placed onto and off of trailers. And the standard in the industry that has become very effective and, and very common is for the units to be transported on either hydraulic or airlift trailers that can lift up and down. And so that is a really important component of what cribbing is. Um, because the reason cribbing is so effective and affordable in the grand scheme of these logistics is it because cribbing will and cribbing and these uh, adjustable trailers eliminates the need to load and unload modular units with a crane. Cranes are very expensive. So if you can imagine a modular unit leaves the factory, well, first of all, it needs to be raised, raised up and placed onto a trailer in the factory to be removed to, to be pulled out of the factory. And then it needs to be um, supported on cribs, and then that trailer will lower down and pull out from underneath the modular unit. 
when it's time for that modular unit then to leave the factory storage yard and be transported to the job site or the, or the local job storage yard, a trailer will then pull back under the modular unit, raise it up off of the cribs, transport it those hundreds of miles to the storage, the job site storage yard. Once again, place cribs under the modular unit, lower the trailer out from under the modular unit, and that's how it's staged at that storage yard. Last phase of its last leg of its journey, a trailer then pulls back under the modular unit at the storage yard one more time, lifts it off the cribs, and delivers it to the crane. So if we think of it in those terms, cribbing is just a temporary support stand for modular units so that the trailers can get under the, the modular unit and lift it and, uh, and lower it without needing a crib. So that's kind of the basis of why cribs are necessary. Uh, the typical trailers that we're talking about are, they generally raise and lower from about 32 inches to 42 inches is kind of the range that they can, they can uh, lower and, and raise. So we built our mod cribs and most wood cribs and other cribs in the industry are 36 inches tall because it's kind of right in the middle. Um, so, so that's kind of the long and the short of what a crib is in, in the commercial modular industry. As far as what types of cribs there are, uh, the vast, vast majority of all cribs uh, being used today and historically being used are simply made of stacks of two by fours nailed together. It's just that simple. Um, an average wood crib is going to require uh, 12 two by fours and about 400 nails to build a wood crib. And the average modular unit needs eight or 10 cribs to support it. So as you can imagine, you start to do the math on a hundred modular unit job. That's a lot that's of nails. Extraordinary, extraordinary number of nails and, and, <laughs> and two by fours and they're heavy and they're difficult to transport and they, they, they don't hold up very long in weather. And, and so there's a lot of things about wood cribs that haven't been uh, terribly efficient. Um, the other method that we've seen uh, or other materials that we've seen um, is really just sort of um, something that factories have, a few factories out there have have manufactured their own cribs just for use at, the, at their factory yards. And those are typically steel. We've seen a couple manufacturers that created their own steel cribs. And when you're not moving uh, cribs from job site to job site, it's not quite as critical that they be lightweight and stackable and easy to transport. So these steel cribs that we see some manufacturing facilities using for their own their own use at their yard are none of the above. They're not stackable, they're not lightweight, they're not easy to transport, and they're not affordable. But if they're a permanent solution for their factory yard, maybe those things aren't as important. Where it is important uh, that they be lightweight, stackable, durable, efficient to move is when you're moving them from job to job around the countryside. And that's where uh, we saw a need and we developed mod cribs. So tell me about mod cribs. How, how was this product developed? Obviously, you've seen a lot of different types of cribs made of a lot of different types of materials in different ways. Did you have sort of a light bulb moment? An aha, eureka, this is what we need to do sort of thing? Or was this a slower sort of gestation of an idea? Well, believe it or not, kind of both. So um, having been in the industry for a long time, uh, and my partner, Matt Mitchell, has been in it for a lot longer than I have, but um, he's been in it for three decades. I've been in it for one. But nonetheless, after having had many, many conversations over the years about what a hassle wood cribs are, um, and, and by say conversations, I'm not talking about just internally you know, process conversations, I mean, industry-wide. Um, uh, cribs have been just kind of this really nagging part of the industry that, in our opinion, over all these years, everybody has really just kind of complained about and really not wanted to have a part of. It doesn't really, you know, cribbing isn't something that manufacturers want to have to deal with, especially the cribbing off-site that's at the storage yards uh, for the clients at, near the job site. Manufacturers don't want to have to figure out how to get heavy, expensive, cumbersome wood cribs transported across the country. And then what do you do with them when the when they're done at that site and getting them moved on to another job site or back to the factory? It's just, it's been a hassle. Um, and, and so over the years, uh, over the first six or eight years um, of, of ProSet's life, um, starting in 
2014. That's just kind of how the conversation went. Oh, these cribs are just kind of a hassle. Well, Matt and I had talked about it over the years and always kind of had little conversations here and there about there's got to be a better way, you know. And so we really started paying attention and trying to see what different people were doing, different manufacturers were doing. And there were, you know, slight variations of wood cribs out there, some a little bit bigger, some a little bit smaller, some have more lumber, some have less, but more or less kind of the same, just stacks of these two by fours, as I described. And then there were a few factories that, as I mentioned, were kind of building their own steel ones. And we we knew about those and we had had a chance to try to lift a couple of them. And we knew that they were not the answer. And then at one point we were visiting a manufacturer and this was about four years ago. And this manufacturer, and I won't name names, but they had some crib, some wood cribbing that they were using in their facility that was so extremely cumbersome and heavy. I mean, literally you'd probably need a, a forklift to move one crib. And something about seeing that, and neither of us said anything to the factory or to each other during that tour. But when we were traveling home from that visit, we both commented on that crib. And it was just kind of that moment that we said, okay, it's sort of almost like enough's enough. Somebody has got to figure this out. And so we went to work really trying to figure out a solution. Um, and if you'd like, I can give you a little bit of a um a, a little bit of an overview of how, how that how that line of thinking went and how the product was ultimately developed. Um, because it wasn't very efficient and it didn't happen very fast. But we originally thought, okay, how do we 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 set the criteria? It needs to be lightweight, it needs to be stackable, it needs to be durable, it needs to hold the weight and last a long time. And then the last one, which is also a, a fairly challenging criteria, is it's got to be affordable because there's a lot of them that are necessary. And wood cribs are not terribly expensive. You know, if it's if it's not relatively affordable, then it's probably not going to be widely accepted. So those are our main criteria: our criteria, lightweight, stackable, durable, and affordable. And so we set out to see what we could come up with. And we initially thought that that would be aluminum. Okay, that should meet those criteria. And it was great for the lightweight, stackable, durable. But when it came to the affordable part, it was absolutely not there. It was just going to be way too expensive. So. We had a kind of a rough design and, and Matt actually mocked one up out of Masonite uh, in his garage and that's where it all started. And we still have that today. I think someday that'll belong in the Mod Cribs Museum. But um, so we thought aluminum would work. We worked with an engineer, we tried to get some pricing and we realized that was a non-starter just because of the cost. So eventually we we had a, an engineer that we were working with propose the idea of a structural foam, which is a very essentially structural plastic which sounded a little bit odd to us because we hadn't thought of it and seemed kind of um, um, kind of amazing that you could actually create a, 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 a crib that would meet those criteria uh, out of plastic that would that would work. But we went ahead and started working on that uh, on that concept, and it's it's essentially what we landed with, and it's 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 an injection injection molded polypropylene with uh, with some fiber, some glass fiber. Uh, and fast forward to our final testing and final product, which we now have, it tested wonderfully. So it it, uh, it, it passed the load test with flying colors. As a matter of fact, there's about a six times safety factor beyond what it's rated for. So extremely, extremely strong, can hold a lot more weight than it's required and stackable and lightweight and, uh, and, and actually pretty cost effective, not a lot more expensive than a wood crib. So that's where we are today. Well, that's fantastic. Uh, Scott, thank you so much uh, for that. You answered so many of my questions. I, I, I was on LinkedIn the other day and I saw a comment uh, from stream modular, our friends at stream modular. They said uh, mod cribs are going to change the game, uh, which, which really struck me. It was very exciting to see. Uh, what other feedback have you gotten uh, to those who have seen mod cribs, used mod mod cribs? Uh, what's the reception been like so far? Well, it's it's really fun and it's been so positive. Uh, and and it's not unexpected because you know the 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 thing to think about is ProSet and our staff um, have have been on the front lines of dealing with the challenges of wood cribs as much as anybody. Our teams. Are, are out there having to muscle these heavy wood cribs around, you know, hundreds of them, maybe a thousand of them on a job. So we we well know um, how much more 
more user friendly and efficient mod cribs are than wood cribs. So it's not unexpected, but it's still really fun and exciting to get those responses. And and you know Carson and the team at Stream has been um, very very supportive and very excited about this. And that and, and that also is not surprising because truck drivers that are doing these mod modular unit deliveries are also those who are going to benefit greatly from this because they are tasked with dragging these wood cribs around as well. And so, you know, set crews, trucking crews, manufacturing facility employees that have to work with the wood cribs, um, all those all those folks are ecstatic about the notion of replacing wood cribs with mod cribs, especially once they get the chance to actually get their hands on a mod crib. So it's been really fun. We've been kind of doing um, some tours around to some of the uh, some of the main manufacturing facilities around the country and bringing a couple of samples of the mod cribs for them to, to just get their hands on and, and see. And every time they grab them by the handle and they pick them up and they smile. And, uh, and the reality is 28 pounds, which is what these mod cribs weigh, is such uh, a relief from uh, the 100 plus pounds, 120, 130. Some of these wood cribs that we've seen weigh up to 200 pounds. And if you can just imagine what it's like for one person to try to move a 120 pound wood crib, matter of fact, according to OSHA standards, um, that's well in excess of what any individual worker should be asked to try to, to try to lift. I, I think OSHA actually says that a, a single worker should not ever be asked to lift more than 50 pounds. So, um, so just the safety factor and the, the, uh, the reduced um, burden on the actual people who have to handle cribs is really impactful. And I think that's a, a lot of what Stream was commenting on in terms of being a game changer. Um, we, we have a lot of factories who are really excited about replacing their wood cribs with mod cribs for that reason alone, because they really do care a lot about the well-being of their staff and their employees. And they realize that this will take such a burden off the human sort of burden of wood cribs. So, so that's been really fun. Um, I, I think, you know, the other piece of the game changing comment from Carson, from a, especially from a uh, for a stream there from a trucking perspective is because mod cribs are stackable, um, you can transport many, many, many more mod cribs on one truckload than you can wood cribs. And matter of fact, I think roughly speaking, um, we can transport about 1,200 mod cribs on one um, semi-tractor trailer versus about 250 to 300 wood cribs. So basically that reduces the truck trips. Um, like for example, if you had a 1,200 mod, or excuse me, a 1,200 crib job, which would only necessarily, that might only be 120 module units. That's not a huge job. That's a fairly average job. So. Mm -hmm thinking of the volume of cribs that are required at these storage yards it's, it's significant so on the average you know again say 100 or 120 modular project job that means that delivering wood cribs to support those units is going to take four or five semi-tractor trailer loads that's a lot of expense that's you know so it's a lot of fuel you know there's environmental impacts to that uh, a lot of time and then handling so Imagine, if you will, you have five, four or five semi-tractor trailers full of these, you know, heavy wood cribs. Well, how do you offload that? Well, you have to have a forklift and then you have to scatter these all around this storage yard so that they're not so far away from where the truck drivers are going to be delivering the mods that the truck drivers have to drag them all over the job site. Somebody has to distribute them around this storage yard. That's a cumbersome, expensive task versus mod cribs, which you can literally carry two at a time easily. Um, so, so I think those are the, those are kind of the, the game changers is really about the ease of, um, of use and transport of, of a mod crib versus a wood crib. Well, it sounds like you're going to be making lots of friends around the industry. Um, though I feel bad for the chiropractors, you're cutting them out of a lot of work. Sounds like. Well, I'm not going to feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, you've been on the road. Uh, with these I've seen on LinkedIn also you've been uh, at several shows you've been going to lots of factories um, where can someone see mod cribs next who is excited about um, getting up close and personal with one of these 
Well, sure. A couple ways that can be done. I mean, obviously, uh, anybody who wants to do a little traveling is welcome to come uh, take a look at them at, at one of the job sites where we have them in use. Um, we also, as you as you stated, we we do a lot of travel anyway. My my partner Matt and I uh, both <laughs> put on a lot of miles every year around the country. Um, uh, both going to our job sites, prospective job sites, at manufacturers around the country. So we we uh, we spend a lot of time visiting factories in, in different parts of the country. And so we're happy to make um, make a visit to any factory that's really interested, and we can we can bring some samples by. The other thing that um, uh, that I should point out is that um, essentially, and maybe uh, maybe maybe jumping ahead here, if you were going to ask this question, but essentially, Mod Cribs is a, is a is a short term rental business for 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 Mod Cribs at these storage yards, as I described. That's that's the business is a rental company. Um, we do, however, have a, a limited wholesale sales program exclusively for manufacturers to use at their factory yards. So we want factories to have the opportunity to use these. At their at their facilities, as I described earlier, to take the burden off their employees, um, they're just a much more efficient uh, option for their staff. So we don't want to we don't want to limit the factories and their ability to use them. And it would not make sense for them to rent because they need them year round, mm -hmm. long term. So we do we do have a sales program just for factories. But essentially, that's our business model: is that we are renting these at, uh, to developers and GCs at the temporary storage yards around around the country. Well, very good. Very good. And yes, you answered a question before I could ask him. That's all right. Um, so, uh, Scott, you talked about the, the rental aspect of your business. You talked about the, the sales that you offer to manufacturers. Uh, how does that work? Uh, thank you for that question. So so really, that's another kind of impetus for why Matt and I made the decision uh, some years ago that we needed to improve and, and kind of help solve this challenging thing that is mod cribs. It's not just, I'm sorry, that is cribbing in general. It's not just that wood cribs are cumbersome and expensive and, and break down uh, in the elements and so forth. It's also because cribbing is, is this temporary cribbing requirement at storage yards um, is something that oftentimes, very, very oftentimes gets missed entirely because it kind of falls through the cracks of all the different stakeholders' scopes. For example, um, when when the menu, or I'm sorry, when the developer uh, uh, is is considering all of their costs and all the all the contracts that they need to engage to get their building complete, they've got all these different um, pieces of that puzzle. They're going to contract with the manufacturer. They're going to contract with the general contractor. They're going to contract probably with the trucking company. Um, and so, in that whole process, the the piece of that puzzle that is temporary cribs at a storage yard, for whatever reason, very, very frequently gets missed. Um, and I think it's this is part of the overall story of, of cribbing and why we started Mod Cribs, which is that it, it, it doesn't really fall clearly in anyone's scope. Generally, the, the general contractor isn't typically aware or thinking about it. The manufacturer, it's kind of out of their scope because once the modular units leave their factory, their scope is pretty much done typically. And then the trucking company is going to be aware of it, but they're pretty late usually to the conversation. So for all these reasons, oftentimes it just absolutely is, is missed in, in budgets and planning and scope and who, who's, who's is it. So what Mod Cribs is proposing and I think is going to successfully help alleviate that sort of missed piece of the puzzle by just, first of all, um, kind of gaining awareness in the community and the industry about the need and the and the opportunity that Mod Cribs brings to that process, um, but if, at the same time, what we're what we're doing is we're creating what we kind of think of as an easy button for that developer because ultimately it's often the developer that kind of gets stuck with it and gets you know kind of has uh, has to figure out how to get cribs you know to their storage yard oftentimes at the last minute because you know nobody planned for it and it just kind of got missed. Well, that's been a challenge historically, and we've had many projects that ProSets worked on where the general contractor is kind of having to scramble and send some carpenters out to the storage yard with a bunch of two by fours and quickly try to build, you know, a thousand of these cribs. And that's not an uncommon occurrence. So the easy button that we've created with Mod Cribs is that simple, simple process of contacting Mod Cribs, letting us know how many modular units you need to stage, where the staging yard is, and when you need to start receiving those modular units. We will provide a quote. We'll help you figure out how many how many cribs you need. Um, our typical quote is going to be for up to sixty days because normally that's about as long as uh, a project will need these temporary cribs. 
And then once the contract is executed, we'll deliver those cribs ahead of this uh, modular units uh, starting to arrive. As soon as the last modular unit is installed on the foundation, uh, the client can call us and we'll come pick them up. It just really simplifies that whole process. Um, and it also takes away from the challenge that we also see with, with wood cribs historically is that back to that example of nobody thought of cribs and then the general contractors out there quickly building all these wood cribs. Okay, so that's an expensive time consuming process, um, high energy consumption kind of process. But what happens at the end of that? So all the buildings are now set and I can show you countless pictures of what that storage yard looks like when the last module unit is set. There are scattered heavy wood, wood cribs all over this yard. Now what? Now they have to be gathered up, they have to be recreated, they have to be put on a truck and hauled somewhere. And unfortunately, in many cases, that process is so expensive that they never get used again. They get thrown away because it's less expensive than trying to figure out how to transport them somewhere and store them somewhere. So taking that out of the industry's sort of inefficient and, and, and kind of challenging um, piece of their of that whole process is, I think, one of the big back to back to streams comments, one of the big game changers that Modcrits brings. That's really a microcosm of the whole modular building industry. If you think about it, it's more efficient, it's more sustainable, uh, it's faster. Well, you're absolutely right. And, and, the, and the other fun thing about it is what is modular? You know, what is the modular industry if, if not? Um, uh, it, it's really about innovation, right? I mean, it's, it's we're, we're, as an industry, we're innovating how we build commercial buildings in the United States. And ModCribs is a very low tech product, mm -hmm. but we like to think it's a bit innovative because it's it's responding to, a need in the industry. So mod cribs aside, uh, what other advancements or, or innovations do you think the industry can look forward to when it comes to uh, setting and, and on, on site logistics? Oh, that's a good question. Um, you know, I, it's, 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 it's going to be kind of a, maybe an odd answer, but from, from our perspective, from my perspective, as someone who's been in the installation side of things for quite some time, I think what we're seeing is we're seeing more advancement in process, I, I would say. So, um, you know, there certainly are better and better um, technologies and designs in terms of equipment. In fact, Matt, uh, my partner, Matt, and and our other, um, uh, other owner, Chris Rimes, and our company developed um, our, our custom halos. Uh, and, and, and that's something that has added a lot of efficiency to our installation process because they're very flexible and adjustable and it's just a, it's a really really great piece of equipment so those are those are kind of things that we're we're seeing some advancements in terms of equipment and so forth on the site but i think even as much or more so um our teams just continuously get better and better at implementing logistics plans and systems and processes that allow us to install these buildings more efficiently and uh so I, th I think i think more than anything i would say it's just in continuing to improve the process and that whole cradle to grave logistics i described ultimately cum culminates in a crane picking a modular unit up and setting on a foundation that's kind of the last step of that process but the efficiency of how many modular units that crane can pick up and set on a foundation in any given day comes down to the planning and the logistics and the overall coordination and programming of the of the of the process. So I guess that's where I see continuing advancements and and we see real evidence of that because we we you know we we do a lot of work looking at historical data on our projects and we are seeing significant increases in our efficiency and the number of units average modular units per day that we set over say two or three years ago. So um, those are those are the advancements that we're going to continue to work on. Well, speaking of innovation, I'm glad you brought it up. I uh, also want to say thank you for uh, the interview that you uh, gave MBI recently. Uh, Mod Cribs is featured in the November, December uh, issue of Modular Advantage magazine. So uh, thank you for your time there. And um, thank you for the time for this interview, Scott. I really appreciate it. Thank you, John. I appreciate, uh, appreciate having me on the program. My name is John McMullen, and this has been another episode of Inside Modular, the podcast of commercial modular construction. Until next time.